evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shelton Hayes, and welcome to another segment of The Arts. This evening, I will be speaking with a gentleman who is a renowned designer, Mr. Sha Tyrone Shebley. Good evening, Mr. Shebley. How are you? Good, Shelton. Fine. Very fine. I'm very good today. Good, good, good. What we want to do is we want to go into where Tyrone Shebley came from, his concept, and where you're going. So let's start with um, kind of touching where, where did you come from with fashion? What started you? What inspired you? What was the thought that one day said to you, this is what you're supposed to do? <laughs> well, what happened I, when I was young, I used to um, look through the magazines. A lot younger, I used to look through the magazines. and. Um, I used to sketch the girls, you know, I used to illustrate, which I still do. And um, actually what I was doing was illustrating um, dresses and um, I had friends who wanted me to draw for them and um, I was illustrating the dresses for them and then I started doing it for myself. I really didn't know how to sew at that time. I was in, I guess, junior high school or, yeah, about junior high school. And um, I had found a sewing machine one day in the garbage can. And um, I brought it home and I asked my mother, because um, she showed me how to, to use the machine. And she told me she's only going to show me one time and then after that it's on me. And so she showed me one time and she, she made me a uh, jumpsuit and it came out really nice. And then I got on the machine and I made my jumpsuit and it came out better. So I was right. doing my thing <laughs> All from right. that point on. All right, so now from that point, um, we're going to get back into it very deeply later on in the show. Mm -hmm. But I would like to also, because I think your slogan is absolutely fantastic. Where did, where, where did you get that idea? Well, it was a God-given name, so it had to flow together. Um, I was watching a commercial, and of course, you know, the wines and different things come on. And um, I thought about it, and I said, oh, that clicks. Wear it, drink it. Then I came up with, you don't drink it, you wear it. That's how it happened. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening, Mr. Tyrone Shabley, you don't drink it, you wear it. Well, Ramika here is giving you this one-piece black. It's a micro-fabric dress. It's a rib pleated bottom. I use dots at the top to give it a little, you know, sparkle. This is like a party dress. Uh, it's evening, and it's a little bit of everything. It's formal and informal at the same time. So this is Ramika Powell for evening wear for Shabu. All right. This is the continuation of the dot collection. Springtime is just around the corner, and what a better way to do it than in yellow. Oh. Yellow is the tradition of the color. Um, a wrap gown front. You see the side netting on the sideline, and um, it's party and it's, it's cocktail at the same time. This is Shelly in Chablis. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, this is the goddess of all goddesses. We call her Miss Diva, but she's giving you the one piece Venus number. I, I call this Venus because it takes you back to the Roman, the goddess days. The way that the dress was uh, put together is actually one piece of fabric wrapped mm -hmm. around the really? entire body and then the cord and the band. All of that is all handwork. Amazing. Oh, this is Shireen. You have to have a little leopard in your closet. You, know, <laughs> you have to. Um, this is really two pieces, the uh, jacket and a one-piece uh, bodice dress. Uh, you notice the uh, detail in the front line and the black background with the uh, leopard skin sleeves. It matches the uh, borderline of the bodice top. And of course, a black bottom to keep the flow going. And I love to do evening wear, mm -hmm. couture. I love to do uh, bizarre fashion. You know, that's my, my, my well, thing. Well, you do it very well. well that's what I really like. Definitely. I really like bizarre fashion. Um, I'm into um, a lot of ready-to-wear mm -hmm. uh, sportswear. A lot of the boutiques that I deal with, the private collectors, they call me for my evening wear especially okay. because of the, um, 
the way that I take it, the approach. Look at this lovely number. Now, Absolutely I was thinking fabulous. that Toni Braxton would be giving me a call for this piece, <laughs> since she's always showing, you know, some part of her body. That's that was wonderful. Rebecca Gonzalez. All right. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for the first little taste of Mr. Chablis' collection, I say he's got a winner, definitely. What do you think about the transition of fashion from, say, I remember once hearing, um, um, Willie Smith say that years ago, this was right before he passed away, how um, most of the designers were very much into like natural fabrics and et cetera, where now polyester has been perfected to the point that it's, it's incredible. Yes. You know, it's absolutely incredible. How do you feel about that type of transition? I mean, uh, economically, uh, does the, do you still find that if you use some, uh, say, man-made fabrics, that you still get the effect? Does it still hang the same? I mean, how how well have they done that? Well, I think that you have to sample uh, fabrics today because now the textile, they're working with the fabrics to make it flow even better okay. um, to as far as the uh, blending of the um, the gabs and mm -hmm. the uh, wool jerseys. You know, it's hang differently than it did, let's say, six or seven years yes. ago or eight years, the way that they're adding the lycra into the fabrics to soften it up so that when it drops on the silhouette, it flows a little bit easier and more mm. better. And it, cu it hugs and contours the body. So it's just the, um, the new approach. I think that you have to touch bases with other fabrics. Uh, we're moving into a new you know, era. Yeah, we're getting definitely. ready to go. I mean, if they're cloning and doing other things, just imagine what they're doing with the goods we'll be wearing when the mm. uh, new Manilium comes <laughs> when in. That, when the transition right. is totally complete. I mean, I, I like working with a lot of natural fabrics, uh, cottons, I love linens. Uh, mm -hmm. My favorite is leathers and suede. I really can take leather and suede and just mold it into, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a piece of art. I think that when I sculpture well, it to the body, that's what it becomes. I've seen some of your leather work and I can definitely agree with you there. Mm -hmm. um, I asked that question because, I mean, I have seen like rayons and, and you, like, as you were saying, some of the lacquers and et cetera, that are devastating. I mean, I'm an old fan from way back, but, you know, technology has really made a difference, and I'm sure that economically it's, it's, it's a lot better on the pocket. Of too. course. When today's woman, she wants to be able to take a dress, ball it up, throw it in the bag, mm -hmm. be able to run someplace, okay. slip into the phone booth, put her dress on, and jump out. I mean, all <laughs> the commercials you're seeing is to true to form. Yeah. That's what it's all about today. I mean, you want to go straight from after five, you know, nine to five mm -hmm. to 11. Okay. And today you have to be able to put together pieces that's um, economic um, for the, the woman to, you, to buy from you. And you also have to give her the look that she's looking for, as well as the man. Today's man is dressing totally different, let's say from 20 years ago to 30 true. years. Very he's true. now relaxed. So he's feeling the same way. He wants to put on a pair of lacquer pants, but not to a point where it's ultra feminine mm -hmm. to a casual masculine approach. So it's just your effect with working with the cloths and the goods. Who were some of the people who inspired you oh, as my. you were, um, say, maturing in the design field? Uh, one of the people who I, I really admire was a good friend of mine, Ralph Wilson, who was living now in St. Croix. When um, I be began to get into fashion, he helped me to uh, go out and meet different people. He introduced me to uh, Angelo Ellaby. He used mm -hmm. to do the big shows at the Terrace Ballroom, Paradiso. Yes, I, I can remember that. the show that they had where he came down out of the ceiling on the uh, trampoline, and you know that was the way he entered into the set. <laughs> that was Mr. But Ellaby that, for sure. <laughs> that was very inspirational to me and okay. that kind of showed me the dramatic aspect of fashion how you should approach it and I guess that's probably why in my clothing you see a little dramatic and then you see other elements as well well yeah I think that but you know uh, again my opinion I think that that's very good mm -hmm. because I think that clothes should accent they should make one exciting. Right. You know, you should look at a garment and say, I want that. I want to wear it. I want it to make me feel like she looks or he looks in it. Mm -hmm. And um, your garments do that. I mean, I don't want to get in one of those gowns, but if I was a woman and tried to think <laughs> like one, I think it would be absolutely fabulous. Well, 
Oh, go ahead. Well, that's the approach to the gal. It's, mm -hmm. it's even with a man who's buying a dress for his girlfriend exactly. or his wife. I have so many different clients that come to see me that at times I have to learn the personality of the person. Mm -hmm. But it's, I'm great at persuading my client to take something that they dare not have tried. And once they find the uh, glove on, they mm -hmm. see that it's true to fit, okay. and they end up walking like out with it. I like that very much. What do you think of a lot of the, I will call them the 90s, de 90s designers of today, um, the coutures that are on the Champs-Élysées in Paris or the um, ready-to-wear of 7th Avenue in New York? How do you feel about their styles and techniques now? Well, a lot of the designers, um, who am I to critique them in a sense, because they're Seventh Avenue, yeah, but well, you, New York your and opinion, Paris. Your opinion is important. Of course Definitely. it is. But I feel that a lot of the designers that um, are out now, as the Tommy Hilfingers, mm -hmm. um, the Donna Karens, uh, Calvin Klein per se, which is very um, simple and classic, mm -hmm. they are getting credit for fashions that some designers locally are doing and have been doing for a That's long time. I and I, I feel that they're sitting in on their shows, mm -hmm. taking their ideas and putting it into motion for themselves and taking credit. Tommy Hilfinger, the line that he's doing now, the color line, block colors, the patchwork, I remember doing that maybe 14 years ago. Okay. To then, people said that I was ahead of my time at one point, but I feel that I'm still ahead of my time. But in a sense, it's the capital tool that helps pilot these designers and lock them into a position where, and the rappers who help them mm -hmm. and the, the different musicians, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big circle of so many different things, which, you know, mm, you have to take a point of view and a look at. I recall um, reading an article on you once, and I, this was something that intrigued me a great deal. And you were saying that uh, <clears throat> you had had a dream, and I think you had dreamt of birds or something like that. <laughs> and you used that dream to inspire you to create fashion from it. I, I think that's amazing. So do you contribute a lot, some of your creations to putting a spiritual thing into it? I mean, is it, or is it just something that you draw on a piece of paper and then you just say, okay, all I'm going to produce that, it? All the clothing that I make when I'm in the uh, studio mm -hmm. is from a spiritual point of view. Uh, the one time I tried not to design from spiritual, I found that I wasn't really happy with the line, although mm. other people felt, you know, that it was really good. But with me, it didn't have that signature, you know, right. that it usually leaves behind. It didn't have it. Okay. So uh, it does come from inside. I, I get different visions and from, I could see an ink pen laying on the floor or a piece of cloth thrown across the table or the way a drape hangs over the window. You and be you know? inspired by Yes. That. That's wonderful. I have some um, other... Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I got caught up in that moment, I'm sorry. When you are designing, do you take it all in as a whole concept or do you design the, the garment, then look for the fabric or are you thinking about the fabric as you're designing? I mean, how do That's you, a two-sided coin. It works two ways. Sometimes the fabric is what triggers for the look of the garment. Sometimes mm -hmm. for me it does. And then again, I have the idea already inside of my, my head, and then I have to search for the fabric. I, want. I might start off with one swatch and then decide to change that and try a new approach. Mm -hmm. But I always make sure I do my pieces in muslin first. And then once I must oh. drape them out, and then I get the feeling of what it's actually going to look like, if it's going to need a harder form of fabric or mm -hmm. a softer ease of fabric, then oh, I take I that approach. That. So that's very interesting. That's my approach. To you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that you said that because for some reason I just always thought designers came with uh, just magic and, and, you know, created things and it was like, oh, phew, there it was. But I never thought the technical part that you just expressed of doing it in one fabric and then seeing how it hangs in, and, and if it needs a harder touch or a sharper touch or a tighter touch. So overall, <clears throat> what I'm hearing is that it's not, I mean, it's glamor 
of course, because you're making people beautiful. But it sounds like you have a lot of hard work. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Fashion is never easy. What you think um, someone will really take a grab to, a grip to, might not be the, the ticket right then. That's why I said uh, maybe 10 years ago, someone said, oh, you're ahead of your time. Or 15 mm -hmm. years ago, you're ahead of your time. And actually, what was done then, I'm seeing now. Hmm. So you understand how that all works? It's like a cycle, a circle. And what you may have uh, attempt to do and feel at one time, it, it comes back again. It repeats itself. And you get a chance to perfect it, redo it, and, and put it out again. Uh, I want to ask you something about the shows. How do you feel about and mm -hmm. all of these divas, the movie stars, they gave you drama. They gave you the jewels, the glamour, the glitz, the hats. They gave you all of the elements. And that is what was lacking. Some designers still capture that feeling, but everyone has an ease approach to it. So you still have to go back to the days when things were relaxed. The, you know, the, the fresh to get air. Down to the basics. Yes, back to the basic. It's, it's definitely that approach. Where do you think fashion is going? Well, I have some things that I would like for you to see right now. I think that's going to be the approach to fashion. I think that um, in that, you will get an idea where I think that fashion is going. Great. So I would like to show you. I'm ready to see it. This is Shibli. Once again, you don't drink it, you wear it. Okay. <laughs> Ramika's back in this one-piece black lace. This could be mm -hmm. for a fun evening. It could be for lounging. It could be for making a statement. You know, sometimes life is like couture. It's like the theater. Mm -hmm. We all find ourselves on stage. Now, look at this lovely number. It's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. The makeup and hair is done by Jamil mm -hmm. Nix Dixon. He's our stylist with hair and makeup. This is Rebecca once again. Take a look at the hemline, how it flounts and flares. See the silhouette, how it hangs on the body? The approach. Like I said, the year 2000 is fastly approaching, and fashion has a new twist now. There's a new approach to it. And I think you have to give a woman what she needs, what she look good in, and remember, it's not it. what you wear, it's how you wear it. Okay. <laughs> Leather. Ah. Oh. The one-piece jumper. Rosa. This is green. I chose green because it reminds me of, you know, the, the South. It reminds mm -hmm. me of money. It reminds me of freshness. Nature. Mint. Yes. Yes. So I chose this particular shade for that piece. Wonderful. <laughs> You're so versatile. I yes. love it. And this is for the shorts, like we're again, spandex effect, multicolor for that Caribbean twist. You know, when you <laughs> want to ball it up, put it in the back, hop on the plane, you're going and to fly. Jamaica. Yes. <laughs> That's the approach. All and right. it comes with a one-piece bathing. She dares not show that now, but it comes with a bathing suit to complement it all. So that's the approach to fashion, and that's where I'm going in style. So what are your, what are your future plans as far as, I mean, do you, do you want to do um, a, a store? Um, I mean, what, what are your plans? With well, this? right now I'm working with a company. I just created a company called Glasshouse Productions. Mm -hmm. I work along with Thelma Green and Jody Chibli, my sister. Okay. Uh, we do annual competitions for uh, the community. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a Cover Kids program, high school versus the college models. I do a hair uh, competition for the stylists, mm -hmm. hair stylists. And I also am planning to do my uh, fashion presentation for this fall, which will be exclusively for buyers only will not be done to the public, open to the public, okay. be strictly to the press, to buyers, and to anyone that's looking to stock their shelves with my product. And that's what I'm offering this season in 97 ending into 98 and taking it the rest of the way out. That sounds that's great. That's my approach to that it all. That sounds great. Well, let me ask you, do you uh, ever get into like children's wear and things of that nature? Yes, I'm, I'm working right now on a ready-to-wear line. As I stated earlier, as far as the uh, programs I do, the cover kits, that's my mm -hmm. children's line. Well, what I did was, in that particular show itself, I ran a children's uh, line of fashion, which is strictly sportswear. And I'm trying now to market it with uh, Kids R Us, and I'm also trying to take it into uh, Sears and J.C. Penney's. Oh, I think that that's great. where, it, you know, that's the that easy approach wonderful. where it will possibly go. I love that. I love that. What, um, your, your models, they're absolutely fabulous. Jamil has done a fantastic job. Yes. I mean, they're beautiful from the beginning. 
Do you find, I mean, how are their personalities as far as um, working with them and putting them in the right garments? And I mean, how do you choose your models for what you design to wear? Believe it or not, some of these young ladies have won some of the programs that I've spoke on, really? which were, yes, they received cash prizes, uh, big trophies. I made sure that uh, at the events, the uh, magazines were, were there, different publications, uh, mm -hmm. people like yourselves who took interest into them and also some of them had got jobs from um, other agencies and are working now in the industry. So it's like I said, it's that opening up doors for them. Some of them are beginners, which I did not point which one out. I'll let you be the judge of that. But you know, the, these girls are working to become professional in this business as I am as a designer. Great. And you know, I think that's, that's absolutely well, that's a compliment to you as a person because, you know, a lot of times uh, I find that people, when they become professionals, they forget about other people that are trying to make a start. Okay. You know, that, can compl that they can compliment as well as them complimenting themselves. And I am one to first to say, which is one of the concepts of this whole program, is that we live in a city like Newark, New Jersey, that is, has an abundance of talent, oh, has an abundance of beauty. And, you know, it's, it, people, are, a lot of the public think that it's a negative thing, but with it's New, not. With Newark, New Jersey? I mean, with a lot of the people in oh, Newark, in New, I'm in, saying. Oh, in Brick but City, it's not. the yes. name is Brick right. City. Well, no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the Newark City. But um, I, think it's, um, I think it's great. What you're doing is absolutely wonderful. It's so wonderful that I'm ready to see some more. Yes. Um, this is what else I have for you. I'm going to show you what I have for this spring and for uh, a day out at the wedding. I'm going to take you into my wedding and then bring you back into my closing. Okay. Okay, so let me take you to a wedding. This is my bride. I gave her nothing but white on white. All right. Ramika, I chose to wear this piece because I think that she represents the beauty, you know, the complete package. She has a lovely face for the dress, and her walk is simply wonderful. I gave her layers of roses around the head, the neck, the sleeve area, crust of jewels in the s sleeves, and I That's trimmed lovely. it with a back kick. That so is it's lovely. A lovely piece of lace. And this is something to wear to the wedding. A nice little short all flounce right. cocktail number. Now all of these flowers in front of this dress were hand done. All right. Okay, the pattern all the way trimmed around. All of that's hand worked. Patent leather top with a French braid around the waistline. Wide brim hat. And of course you have to throw on a pair of gloves with this or without when you're sitting in the bins it's or still wonderful. you know, blowing in the wind. So this is the day. And you know what I notice about your clothes? So they're practical. I mean, oh, yes. you know, they're, they're exciting, they're stunning, they're beautiful, but they're not I mean, they look comfortable. That's the word I'm looking for. They Thank look you. comfortable. This is my approach to um, a different angle of style, so to speak, of a crossover with a little hip hop twist. Mm -hmm. Still with a classy, you know, ready yes. to wear twist. Yes. You can wear this, and you still can be into, you know, the hip hop form. And um, <laughs> pants, short skirt. Oh. Um, once again, this is all hand painted in the back. Um, it's broken colors to give you a little vibration. You see it has the only on the back of this one. So when you wear it, you feel like the only okay. one in it. That's the texture, that's the effect. Suede. It's inspiring. Suede well. on suede, yes. Palazzo that's walking beautiful. slacks tapered at the hip line and a peplum yoke wrapped front. Great. And Shelly. Bustier at the top line, not front. This has the signature of it all. That's the Chablis signature. So once again, you don't drink Chablis, you wear it. That's the effect, and this is the approach. Well, I would be the first to say this is to be worn. The collection is absolutely, absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So could we possibly uh, just kind of run through this all, these three young ladies one more time, because it looks like a combination and it's great. Take it short, take it with slacks, or take it for a gown. Either way you approach it, it's all, you know, fashion. Absolutely great. So are you still, um, even with doing your business, 
Are you still considering um, having private clients and things of that nature? You know, once you start competitions. A, yes, I'm working now with a lot of different artists who are coming up with new uh, record labels and um, various things. And those clients that I've had from the past, how can I get rid of my clients? They will never let me go. Okay, great. I can see why. Let me go. Your work is really great. So, Mr. Chablis, this has been a wonderful time sitting here talking with you. You've educated me on fashions. Um, I can't see you going anyplace else but to the top. I appreciate that. God bless you. Mr. Jamil, thank you for your assistance. And ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for watching the arts. My name again is Shelton Hayes. Until when? Thank you.